Good morning and welcome to the Core Connection. I'm Mira Rubin here with you on Enlightened World Network. And today's topic is the loop. Have you ever gotten stuck in one of those thought loops that just keep going round and round and round and round and you keep triggering and re-triggering undesired emotion and um it just it just feeds on itself. So um we're going to talk about that this morning and how we might find ways to extricate ourselves from the loop. And uh, before we get started, let's take a minute or two to get present. Good morning, Rosalind. Welcome. It's great to have you here with us this morning. And everybody else who's joining us, uh, before we get started, we're going to just take a minute or two to get present. So... Let's take a deep breath in through your nose and hold it. And imagine clean, crisp oxygen flooding your lungs, flowing into your bloodstream, nourishing all your cells and your organs, bringing vital life energy to your body and being. And as you exhale, exhale any tension, stress, negativity, fatigue. And let's take another deep breath in through your nose. And hold it. And this time, imagine brilliant bright light lighting you up from the inside out, illuminating, electrifying, and energizing all your cells, your molecules, your electrons, creating a brilliant beam of light from your heart out into the world. And as you exhale, exhale any remaining tension, stress, negativity, fatigue. And now let's press our palms together and rub those palms vigorously against one another, feeling that friction, the temperature, the, the pressure, all those sensations, the tickling and the tingling, and allow all, the, all of that feeling, all of that sensation to bring you present right here, right now, into this remarkable physical form that enables you to experience life. Welcome. Ooh, the morning yawn. Okay, so the loop. So this came about because um, last night I just found myself in this loop of actual resentments, you know, just going back over, over certain incidents that had happened uh, with family members and and every time I would think about it, it would trigger an emotion and and then I would find myself going into this whole justification thing in my head and defensiveness and and it just kept going around and around and I, I, I was aware of it too and say okay enough of this you know let's let's look for magnanimity let's le let's look for letting this go and then and then what would come up was yeah but and then it would go back in this cycle and I was able I I appreciate that I had I was given the grace to be able to see this crazy pattern, really crazy pattern, because it was it was something that was beyond me in its way. It was um, it kind of had a life of its own, you know. It wasn't reflective of my highest intentions or my intentions even um it, it's like it was some kind of automatic program that was running and running and running and um and I got to see it but it seeing it wasn't enough to free me of it just being aware of it you know it was like okay so I'm in this loop Oh, excuse me. Um, I'm in this loop, but it just kept on going like the ever ready bunny. And, uh, 
you know, finding finding the justifications and, and all kinds of stuff. And then I would go to step back and say, okay, so what's underlying this? You know, there was a sense of, of pride, a sense of protection, self-protection, self-defense, uh, vulnerability, of woundedness, what, you know, like all these different things were coming up and then bam, I'd be right back in the loop again. And um, so I, I'm wondering if you guys experienced this or have ever experienced this. I think that what happens a lot of times is that we get in these loops and we're not necessarily aware that they're there and that we're caught up in it. And this, this whole process of justification and, and self-validation. Um, I, I was debating on whether to talk about resentments today because, you know, that's what the loop was too. Um, anyway, the way that I got out of it was I finally just decided to do a session on myself and that, that enabled me to detach. Uh, but it was, it was really interesting to have this experience almost of being possessed, you know, like realizing that there was something at work that was being really persistent in me that wasn't what my my conscious desires were and so um it occurs to me that one way to um break the loop in order to be able to go back and look at it more clearly at some point, because clearly this thing was going round and round. There was something there that was calling for my attention. Um, and I was seeing the the resentment and the attachment that, that was at play. Um, but in that moment, I didn't really have a means to um it, it was it was too activated to be able to interact with it uh from a, a healing perspective what I needed to do in that moment was just to get some distance from it to free myself from it in some way and um you know that I think Good morning, good morning, Bernadette. Good morning, good morning, Gia. Welcome, guys. It's great to be here with you this morning. We're talking about the loop and and the loop being this sort of uh, brain worm that gets in your head and just keeps playing and playing and playing. And uh, good morning, Lisa. Welcome. We haven't seen you for a while. It's great to have you here with us. Welcome. <clears throat> So um, these these patterns that kind of take us over where it's the same, it's like a tape on a loop that's just going over and over and over and over and not saying anything new and just reactivating and re-triggering all these feelings. So um, what, what I was alert to in the process of this loop, which happened to do with resentments, um, was that there was there was a sense of of um, of pride of not being appreciated of being um, disrespected of being disregarded of um, not uh, awesome Lisa. Lisa says, it's been a minute adjusting to my new normal. Yeah, so I think our new normal is in constant flux. So, you know, adjusting to no normal or or um, or shifting ground, right? Learning how to dance on shifting ground. Anyway, um, I, I wish you... 
I wish you inspiration along that journey, Lisa, of, uh, of finding whatever that new normal might be. Anyway, um, so when we get stuck in these loops, what do we do? What do we do to remove ourselves from them? And then also find, I mean, what was present for me, what was really clear is that there's stuff that needs healing, you know, that, that this was a big indicator that there is some deeper stuff going on that is calling to be addressed. And um, in the heat of the moment is not always the best time to address something that is calling for attention. You know, um, when there's an open wound, it's not necessarily the time to be talking about what led to that wound being opened. Um, it might be, it might be. Um, but in this particular case, to address it head on wasn't working um, because it just kept reactivating all this, all this really old, old pattern stuff for me. So, you know, I, I was able to separate myself from it by, by doing a session around it. Um, in, instead of trying to um, use my conscious awareness, my intellect or my um, conscious understanding to sort of move into the realm of okay this is this is clearly an embedded pattern um what what can we do to relieve it for the moment you know just to get relief enough so that at a later time you can go back with some perspective um so Rosalind says if your true self knows it's just stories is ego loud and trying to cling to what it thinks is safe? Inner voice isn't so loud and is guiding as high or as fast as you want to go. So I love I love that you're saying that and and um, sometimes sometimes you know it's it's like uh, the rock'em sock'em robots. I don't know if that's before your time or something. It's just this toy called Rock'em Sock'em Robots that would just pound on each other. But um, sometimes those stories have, have tremendous power. Um, and what was interesting is that I kept experiencing the visceral feeling associated with those stories so it wasn't it wasn't just an academic experience it was a visceral experience that every time it would get to this certain point in the loop there the feelings would kick in and it would reinforce it and then it just was off on a rumble and tumble again so uh, Rosalind says, is there a part of us that doesn't believe the changed self-talk, like it doesn't feel true? Well, that's actually a really good point, Rosalind. That's a challenge with affirmations, for instance. If you um, are telling yourself things that you know are patently untrue, at least in this moment, then it just uh, erodes the sense of of trust in oneself, you know, because here you're trying to tell yourself lies um, or or trying to make too big a change um, in or to in such a way that it's not believable. Uh, so in this case, it wasn't that there was the um, self-talk that wasn't believed. It was that there was just this loop that was playing. It was definitely old noise. Um, but every time that that loop played, it activated these, these feelings. 
And so um, step one in this case was to get some distance, you know, to break the loop, break the chain so that this pattern, it was sort of a self-reinforcing pattern to, to limit that um, or to just cut it off enough to make it stop so that the the negative feelings weren't getting reinforced but it it was powerful enough to get my attention uh so that i recognized oh wow this is still an issue things you know that i've worked on that i've believed were healed you know things come up at another dimension things come up at another level for us to um to address oftentimes we think we've resolved something where uh, maybe we've just resolved a fraction of it and um, buried the rest and then bam it shows up like a whirlwind for us sometimes so um sometimes we can make the recognition for that place and and say okay i get it there's something here that is calling for my attention and then and then uh we get to revisit it when when the nerve endings aren't quite so raw and um we have maybe a greater capacity to bring bring love and and um love forgiveness acceptance uh appreciation bring that into the equation um lisa says for me it's not that it's not believed it's my head isn't used to hearing it yet i feel it's almost checking to make sure it's true the, the and i'm thinking lisa what you're talking about is the new self talk the um the new perspectives and and maybe the old pattern is so strong that it makes the new perspectives hard to metabolize right it's like oh wow you know you're talking nice to me when you've been beating me up all these years now you know what's going on so it's interesting how we have these many dimensions of interaction with self uh from from all these different perspectives so i i get what you're saying lisa is like yeah you really mean that uh i'm a little skeptical let's let's test it and see how how committed you are to this new vantage point um so the the thing that i and in retrospect, thinking about this whole situation with the um, resentments is I, I recognized that I wasn't falling into beating myself up for having those feelings or for being in the loop. Uh, I was recognizing I'm in the loop. And... Um, that's a huge step for any of us to to have whatever feelings we're having and to allow them to be feedback rather than something that we then judge ourselves for further which throws us deeper into another dimension of another loop perhaps if that makes any sense so by allowing what's there to be there you know, by recognizing it, not not um, compounding it with more judgment and more um, complications, you know, to just recognize it. Oh, wow, this is what's going on right now. Interesting. Um, when we come back to it when we've gotten a little distance perhaps we can cultivate some compassion around it so in this case you know there was there was a lot of emotion and um 
so what that indicates to me in retrospect is there is still a woundedness there you know woundedness of not being accepted of of um Ultimately, I guess it goes to, you know, a lack of self-love on some level, a lack of self-acceptance, because when we recognize that we're okay, really, really, then we have space for other people to be where they are, you know, and, and we don't have to become so defensive in the face of it. We don't have to be making our case we don't have to be justifying and validating and and fighting we can just be in a deeper space of love and acceptance of that person where they are we don't have to make it about us and we don't have to make it create this greater opposition so Bernadette says, <laughs> yeah, it's like doing something the same and expecting a different outcome. I think that's the definition of crazy, you know, is doing the same thing and expecting a different outcome. So when the mind chatter changes after years of same predictability, it'll take some time to change the nerves fighting back. I, you know, I think, Bernadette, you're so right. We're just creating new neural pathways, right? And um, I think, you know, there is so many years for me in my life, there are so many years of rage from uh, in response to an experience of being deeply disempowered that, um, you know, that it's so interesting, even through whatever evolution these things sort of circle back, you know, it's the spiral of change. Hopefully it's an upward spiral, right? Where um, we, we heal something and then it comes back around and there it is again. And it's like, oh my gosh, but it's not quite the same because we're at a different level of awareness around it. And, you know, it's, it's this spiral of change, this evolutionary, um, path of transformation right so and it takes it takes repatterning and some of those patterns are so deeply entrenched seeing them is the first step for sure you know like being able to recognize the pattern and um recognize it with compassion hopefully uh recognize it with as a witness, you know, as an observer rather than as a uh, judge and jury kind of thing, just to recognize it as feedback. So Rosalind says, do we use truth for our own agenda? So the word truth then becomes quite subjective, right? If um, we're using truth for our own agenda, uh, we're kind of picking and choosing what that truth might be, right? Uh, Ralston goes on to say, do we stop talking to someone because of something we heard? That's a really good question because that's part of what was going on here is, you know, certain things that were said, being attached to those things that were said and attributing all kinds of meaning to those things that said, well, maybe I shouldn't be talking to this person. Um, and so Rosalind continues, so the steps look like feelings, the actual sensation you ha are having. Look at the sensation. Sensations are the vibrations of consciousness. Little by little, the sense of urgency falls away. So Rosalind, I, I so thank you for that reminder that when we experience the feelings, when we experience the experience, it allows us to go more deeply into it. And as we allow that depth of experience, what happens is that that energy does dissipate. And it was so interesting, you know, with that perspective in mind, looking at what was going on for me last night, um, I, I, I wasn't able to identify that 
that access point in that moment. You know, to just say, okay, we'll be with the feelings. Because because the loop, it was really interesting. The loop was, think about the conversation, feel the feelings, create the justification, and then become aware of the loop and say, well, you know, let's, let's try to... Um, ex uh, to add some compassion and then it went back into the conversation again without the ability in that moment without the perspective in that moment to actually feel the feelings um because it it was it was really a visceral feeling that certainly i could have and i know enough to know that I could have just felt more deeply into the feeling and that itself would have shifted the whole loop. It was almost like the loop wanted to perpetuate itself. So it was just going back around and around and around to, to create the trigger, the feeling, the trigger, the feeling, the trigger, the feeling, until finally I just said, okay, enough. I'm, I'm just going to shift into another space um, to get some distance from this uh, so that I can come back and and um, address it from a more resourceful place at another time. So I guess we have all these different devices, right? Like seeing seeing the loop itself isn't necessarily enough to get out out of the loop, which is, maddening in its way right you know it's like oh, okay i see this but boop there i am again and now i see it and now oh there i am again it was like uh the worst aspect of groundhog day you know the going over and over again and so um what i recognize is that um Going at things head on is not always the best strategy, right? Going at things head on can create or exacerbate conflict. It can escalate conflict um, or, you know, like strengthen the polarities when we try to just address things head on. Sometimes we need a side door in. Sometimes we need to be more um, indirect, indirect, um, which is not my strength. So to be, it, it, it's interesting, I was listening to some change makers around our environmental crises and um, they were talking about strategies and talking about how sometimes you just sort of have to drop something into the mix and let it have its own life let it percolate and um, rather than just taking it on directly um, and I, and I think that there's something to be said for um, subtlety, although that's, that's a lesson I'm learning on so many different levels through my life. You know, like subtlety hasn't been my strong suit. So Bernadette says, how do you break the loop of your experiences coming at you negatively and you're exhausted and potentially numb? Yeah, so Bernadette, I think that that's really what we're talking about is um, breaking the loop of these experiences coming at you negatively. Um, <laughs> Lisa says, mine either, subtlety not being a strong suit. So um, I think I think that 
one of the ways that we get to break that loop is first being witness. Being witness doesn't necessarily break it. That was my experience last night. Um, you know, it's just occurring to me and I didn't try it last night. So uh, this isn't coming as a, as a proven method, but it occurs to me that we could just go more deeply into it. You know, like if, if it feels like the world's coming to an end, maybe we get to consciously have it, the world coming to an end and just go deeper and deeper and deeper into it in a conscious way. And I think that maybe that will activate a part of ourselves that are like, okay, this is boring. I've had enough of this. That's one possibility. Another possibility is to be witness and to allow ourselves um, to feel a feeling, you know, like the more, the more we resist something, the more power we're giving it, you know, the more we, we brace against something, the more we're embedding it. So sometimes maybe the thing we get to do is to find something that lifts us emotionally. I know when I was in a deep, 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 deep depression, that I would do all different kinds of things just to elevate my energy. So, you know, I'd be crying, but I would try to sing while I was in the shower, you know, so even if it was just the smallest increment of, of elevation, that was something. Um, another other times when I was just in despair, I would I would go and do something that brought me joy. Like I really enjoyed taking photographs, being in nature, you know, observing the beauty. And what I'm what I'm finding is that beauty for me is a is a doorway, a gateway to being able to experience awe and wonder and and uh, gratitude. And moving into those spaces of awe and wonder and gratitude uh, can break that cycle. You know, being able to, to move into this more expansive space. Um, Got to run, Lisa says. Have a marvelous day. Looks like it's going to be beautiful. Thank you for being with us, Lisa. Have a great day. And uh, it's actually time to wrap up. So I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you to all of you who are joining us for these conversations. And uh, may, may you find your way out of the loop um, and, and then notice that the loop is there because there's something that is calling to be addressed. And so with that, so much love to you. I'm Mira Rubin. This is The Core Connection. And I go live here on the Enlightened World Network Facebook page each weekday morning at 9 a.m. Eastern. Also the Enlightened World Network YouTube channel. And I encourage you to check out the other wonderful programming on Enlightened World Network, EWN One with the Earth, Enlightened World Living. And until next time, so, so, so much love to you and deep, deep, deep appreciation.